Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to work with the new options for larger time signatures found in Dorico Pro 2, the advanced music notation software from Steinberg. By default, time signatures appear on every staff. However, various conventions have developed over time that can help with the readability of larger orchestral scores. Perhaps they contain several changes of meter, for example. Thanks to new layout and engraving options in Dorico Pro 2, these are now easy to achieve and tailor to your requirements. I have a project open that contains several players and I'm going to open the layout options, which are found here in setup mode by selecting the layout we want to work with and clicking the settings button at the bottom of the panel. You can also find the layout options at the bottom of the setup menu or by pressing the key command Control shift l that's Command-Shift-L on Mac, from anywhere in the program. If you do use one of these other methods to open the layout options, do remember to select the layout you wish to edit in the sidebar. There's a new category in layout options all about time signatures, and the first option here allows us to specify how time signatures are going to be positioned on the staves. There's an option to show just one large time signature for every bracketed group of instruments, or you can choose to display them above the staff at system object positions, which is where items like tempo markings and rehearsal marks are drawn. Let's select the option to show time signatures once per bracket, and when I press apply, we can see that indeed we do have just one large time signature for this entire woodwind bracket and the brass here are sharing a time signature, and so on. However, simply enlarging the regular time signature numerals in this way doesn't make for a terribly pleasing result. So now if we scroll down to this next layout option for setting the overall design, we can choose this narrower version of the standard serif numerals. And immediately we're creating a look similar to that used by composers such as Britton, Birtwistle, and others around the middle of the last century. If you're aiming for the look of modern media scores, perhaps for film, TV, or video game music recording sessions, then you might wish to use the narrow sans serif design. There is also an option to use your own choice of font for time signatures. Choose plain font here. Then in engrave mode, if we look in the engrave menu for font styles and then choose the time signature plain font style, we can choose any font that is installed on the computer. I'd recommend choosing a narrow or condensed style for use with large time signatures. A single time signature will appear for every bracket in the ensemble, by default centered vertically with the bracket. Single unbracketed staves will still show a time signature, though by default it is larger than a normal time signature. Pairs of braced staves will likewise show a time signature on each staff, larger than a normal time signature. Of course, this is Dorico, so you can modify all of these values to your heart's content. To do this, open the engraving options by pressing Ctrl Shift E, and that's Command Shift E on Mac and selecting time signatures in the sidebar. The options we're interested in are towards the end of the page. Firstly, we can modify the scale factors of time signatures centered on brackets. For example, we can see here that by default, time signatures on a bracketed section of four or more staves will appear 10 times the size of regular time signatures. Other options here, allow you to align the time signatures to the top of each bracketed group rather than the middle, as is often the convention with film, TV, and game music scores, and also to treat all percussion and keyboard instruments as if they were grouped in a single bracket. And remember, because the options for time signatures are layout specific, when we set up large time signatures in the full score, the individual parts remain unaffected. In fact, it means you're free to set your preferred style for time signatures in parts as well. Back in layout options, let's try showing time signatures at system object positions, which means that they will appear above the same staves as tempos, rehearsal marks, repeat endings, and so on. 
you'll notice immediately that when time signatures are displayed above the staff, they will have the advantage of occupying no horizontal or rhythmic space. Of course, this is at the expense of occupying more vertical space, especially if you have system objects set to appear above more staves than just the top one. And that is also a layout option found in the staves and systems category near the bottom of the page. So, for example, if I select strings and press apply, then you can see that in my layout, time signatures are now also appearing above the first violins. There are also engraving options for time signatures at system object positions, allowing you to change the scale factors, whether they appear centered or left aligned to bar lines, and letting you decide how time signatures work with other system objects at the same position. And these time signatures that live outside the staff can, of course, be repositioned freely in engrave mode, either with the mouse or with Alt and the arrow keys. And the Edit Reset Position menu item will always take them back to their original position. I very much hope you've found this video helpful. If you have, just for me, please click the thumbs up button below. That lets me know you've liked it. And subscribe to our Dorico channel right now to see many more videos like this one. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.